items of local pelvic examination are inspection of external genitalia, digital palpation for the uh, vaginal wall and for nieces and portal vaginalis of the cervix, and by manual examination to uh, differentiate between any trans swelling or adenixial swelling, and the casco speculum to examine and see the uh, part uh, portal vaginalis of the cervix. And we have a special test, which are PR, combined PR and PB, and sampling. We will start by the inspection. Inspection for the external genitalia. We can see here the moons, uh, the nearest. Here, the tulipia majora which is the fatty part and containing hair, and separation of the two lipia majora by the index finger, and the sump of the left hand, we can see the two lipia minora, and the clitoris, and separation of two lipia minora, we can see a triangular pinkish area, which is the vestibule. In this vestibule, we can see three openings, the first opening here is the external urethral meatus. The second orifice here is the vaginal introitus. And the two opening of the parsoling gland at 5 and 7 o'clock. And this opening cannot be seen except if there is pathology or discharge coming from these parsoling glands, which are embedded in the lower third of the lipia major. Uh, after that, uh, when we are Exposing the vestibule, we ask the patient to cough to see if there is any discharge, any prolapse, any bleeding come from this area, vaginal introitus. Then the meeting of the tulia minora, posterior is the foreshad. The meeting of tulipia majora posterior is the posterior commissure. And then we have the perineum, which is a space between the posterior commissure and the anus. And uh, it is uh, usually four centimeters. If it is uh, less, it is a defective perineum. And the anus, if we see biles coming from it or something like that. And this is inspection of the external genital. By digital palpation, we mean that we separate this lipia minora and we introduce uh, the index finger and the middle finger of the right angle of the right hand, and we go to feel the anterior vaginal wall, the posterior vaginal wall, the lateral wall, the fornices, which is the gap between the posterior vaginalis of the cervix and the uh, vagina. There is anterior fornix and posterior fornix and two lateral fornices, and we examine these areas for if there is masses, if there is uh, 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 scars, anything in this area. And also we feel the portion vaginalis of the cervix. It's about two and a half centimeter, and the os, we feel the external os at the level of the ischial spine, the two lateral projection of the pelvis. If it is down, it is prolapse. And uh, it is the direction of this cervix, the portion vaginalis is downward and backward, and here the uterus is antiverted flexed. If we feel it uh, directed forward or directed uh, upward, it is retroverted uterus, it's going backward. And uh, through which uh, this uh, digital palpation, we can feel the cervix, if there is any mass, uh, any things in, the, in this cervix. After that, we do during, we are still inside. We don't introduce and remove our hand. We are still inside. We put our hand. If the, this uh, porch vagina is directed downward, we have to put our hand, to, our vaginal two fingers, the index fingers and middle finger in the anterior fornix and the uh, other left hand on the lower part of the abdomen, meaning in the suprapubic region to do the bimanual examination. And then we will shift our vaginal hand to the lateral fornix and the abdominal hand in the iliac fossa. And the, again we do in uh, put the vaginal finger in the lateral fornix and the upper abdominal hand, it will be on the other iliac fossa. 
The aim of this by manual examination is to differentiate, to feel if the uterus is normal, if the adenexia when moving laterally is normal, and to differentiate if there is mass. Is it uterine mass or adenexial swelling? Adenexia means that it's the ovary, the broad ligament, and the tube, and or it is uterine, if it is uterine mass. What is the differential diagnosis between a uterine mass and the adenexial swelling felt by, by manual examination? Usually, the uterine swelling is central. It is firm. There is no sulcus between the mass and the, and the uterus, and there is transmitted movement. If we move the uterus, the movement will come to my vaginal fingers. But for this uh, adenixial swelling, it will be lateral, it will be a cystic or solid, there is a space between this mass and the uterus, and if we move this mass, the movement will not be transmitted to the vaginal hands. And this is the bimanual examination, how we do, and the aim of doing it. After that, when we are going back to withdraw our hands, we have a, a, between the junction of the upper two thirds and lower third of the vagina, we ask the patients to catch my fingers, to see the tone of the levator in eye in cases of prolapse, is it okay or not? Mm. Again, when we are withdrawing, we have to catch the wrestling glands at both sides. If they are felt enlarged, it is, there is pathology. It is either infection or malignant. After that, we withdraw. Casco speculum. The casco speculum is double blade and self retaining uh, casco, which means that it has a screw to fix it at this position. How to introduce it? We introduce it edge wise, closed, edge wise, like that, and separation of the lipia minora by the index finger and the sample by the left hand, and it goes edge wise, like that. It has to be lubricated by uh, saline if the condition is infection and we have to do it first in the first step of examination if the uh, we are trying to uh, having a swab from uh, discharge of the vagina but if uh, there is uh, no symptoms of infection and we put it as a fourth step in the local pelvic examination and it will be it will be sterilized by betadine and uh, then go edgewise, the half of the vagina, and we will rotate it like that. And uh, we have uh, to open it to see the portal vaginalis of the cervix. And then we have uh, to lock it to be self retaining and start to look at the cervix, portal vaginalis of the cervix, to see if there is uh, normal portal vaginalis or there is chronic cervicitis or there is a cancer cervix with a cauliflower mass and ulcer induration, anything like that. So we have uh, to put this uh, casco in cases like uh, routine pelvic examination. Like it has another indication uh, during. Uh, uh, introducing an IUD uh, in cases of uh, doing pap smear and in minor gynecological operation like DC, the dilatation and the carotage. But, uh, it has a lot of indication, you have to search for it. And uh, when we remove it, we have to unscrew the lock and then we uh, start to go edgewise like that to remove it. Rectal examination by introducing uh, an index finger of right hand uh, in the uh, rectum, and uh, it is done for special indications like inversion and uh, to know if there is uh, a rectal seal or not, uh, as the il, il, il anterior rectal wall come from uh, the il posterior vaginal wall like that. Uh, also, in cases of uh, cervical uh, malignancy, to see if uh, there is parametric infiltration and this extent, extent of this parametric ex uh, uh, infiltration, uh, to see if there is cancer-free area or not, meaning that uh, I can uh, feel the mass away from the pelvic wall, lateral pelvic wall, so it is stage two, but if it obliterates to, to be, 
or it obliterates this angle, and there is no cancer free area, it is a stage 3b. Then the combined PR and PV, we introduce one finger in the anus and the other finger in the uh, vagina, and this is done in cases of uh, rectovaginal fistula, in cases uh, to differentiate between enterocell and rectocell. When uh, they, uh, we ask the patient to cough and the impulse comes to our uh, tip of the fingers, it is uh, enterocell. If uh, the two fingers separate from each other when coughing, this means it is rectocell. Sounding and it is done by uh, insertion of the casco speculum and uh, in opening it. And we uh, use the uh, volcellum, which is uh, a multi tooth volcellum, which is less traumatic, or a single tooth uh, volcellum, which is traumatic, to catch the anterior uh, lip of the cervix and do counter traction, not to perforate the uterus. And then we introduce the sound. The uh, its diameter is, is four millimeter, and we introduce it inside with this counter traction, not to perforate the, the uterus. And the first resistance is the internal os, and the second resistance will be the fundus, not to uh, go behind the uh, the fundus. So when we reach the second resistance, it is the fundus of the uterus. So we start by a ring forceps to uh, demarcate the the length of the uterus and we withdraw the uh, sounds and see how many centimeters is the length of the uterus. And the, why we do the sounding? To measure the length of the uterus for insertion of IOD, to measure, not to perforate it to the IOD, to know the direction of the uterus, if it's anti-verted, flexed or retroverted. Uh, cases of uh, uh, presence of a polyp to differentiate if it is endocervical polyp or ectocervical polyp.